Hi friends, I'm Amy Julia Becker and I'm here today to talk about Psalm 23, uh, but I'm here really to talk about worry and what we do with worry. I used to think I was not someone who worried very much. And I thought that because I was not particularly worried about my kids' health and safety. Might be bad to admit that as a mom, but it's true. I wasn't that worried if they fell off a swing set. I wasn't that worried about them getting sick. I actually did not do a great job of teaching them how to wash their hands, which has been unfortunate in the time of COVID. But I felt like as a mom, I was like, I believe in germs and dirt. It's all good. Get sick, get dirty, get scraped up. It'll be good for you. And as a result of all that, I thought I just was not a parent or a person who worried very much. But over time, I began to recognize, okay, so I don't worry about those things, but I worry about so many other things. I worry about what I look like, not just on the outside, but how I appear to other people and what they think of me. I worry about whether my kids are on screens too much. I worry about whether I am a good mom. I worry about whether I'm working too much or too little. I worry about all sorts of things. And I started to also recognize that in the Bible, uh, Jesus talks about worry a lot. And he basically says, you know, from a human perspective, it makes a lot of sense to be worried. We are these like little evolutionary creatures who are just scrambling for survival all the time. And Jesus pretty much says, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to chase after food and shelter and all the things you need and worry about it unless God is real and God loves you and God can and will care for you in those needs. And what Jesus basically says is if God can and will and wants to love you and care for you, then hey, guess what? You can be freed from your worry and instead pursue what matters to God participate in what matters to God. I bring all this up as we read Psalm 23 because it's not usually, at least I haven't heard it before, as a psalm about overcoming worry and participating in what God is doing in the world. But I think that really fits when we look at the psalm again. So I'm just going to read it through and make a few comments as we go. This is Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. So there's an image of a sheep or us as sheep coming to God and we're kind of disheveled and a mess. And the first thing God does is says, let me take care of you, right? He makes me lie down in green pastures. Let me give you rest. Let me give you comfort. Let me give you exactly what you need just to be physically restored to yourself. Then he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. In the Bible, whenever we see the word righteousness, it really could also be translated as justice. And what justice, I'm just learning what this means in the Old Testament in particular, is a proactive concern for the orphan, the widow, the poor, and the stranger, or the alien or foreigner. So he guides me in paths of justice. Once I am restored, once I have gotten the care and comfort and love that I need from God, guess what he does? He guides me in paths of righteousness, of justice. He sends me out to participate in the work of caring for other people for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So once the psalmist has gotten this rest and has been walking the path of justice, it's not like everything is peachy. He's still walking through the valley of the shadow of death, for heaven's sake. But he says, I will fear no evil. And it's not because evil doesn't exist. And it's not because death isn't present. It's because God is with him. And that similarly is this refrain throughout the Bible. It's not do not fear because there is nothing to fear. It's do not fear because I am with you. Do not worry because you can trust me. Do not have anxiety because I will care for you. And then the psalmist finishes, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So there's this final image of abundance, of joy, of goodness and love and mercy, and of being in the presence of God. So for any of you who are like me and who know that you do indeed worry a lot, we are invited to bring our whole selves with all of our worries to God to receive the rest and care and restoration that he wants to give us and then to walk out into the world with him in paths of righteousness and justice, caring for other people, fearing no evil, and knowing his presence with us for all our days.